In the last episode of Soap, Jessica found Chester in a hotel room with another woman and told him he had better find another place to live. Jody found out someone had complained to the welfare department about him. Dutch found out Eunice has been fooling around with another man. And Jessica met Billy's teacher and found her very nice. Want to find out more? Stay tuned for this episode of Soap. This is the story of two sisters, Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. These are the Tates. And these are the Campbells. And this is Soap. How do I know it's really you? <laughs> Ma, you can hear it's me. No, you might be Chester disguising your voice. <laughs> Ma, I swear, I'm not Daddy, I'm me. Are you alone? Yes, I'm alone. Please open the door, I'm holding a tray. How long are you going to stay locked in your room? Until I know he is not in the house. Well, why don't you just talk to him? I have nothing to say to him. Well, maybe he does. I know. And I've heard it all before. <laughs> I love eating on trays, don't you? I love eating. <laughs> Ma, just talk to him. The only trouble is that no matter how careful you are, there's always crumbs in the bed, even if you're only having soup. <laughs> Won't you feel better resolving this one way or the other? Uh-oh, look at that. Mm -mm. Crumbs already. <laughs> well, I'll just brush them over on Chester's side. <laughs> you see, there are some advantages to sleeping alone. Of course, that's the only one I can think of. Ma, you should see him. He sits in the living room, and every time someone walks by, he grabs their arm and weeps. <laughs> it's impossible to get anything done around here. Maybe if you just talk to him, he'll go away. Oh, I can't, Corinne. Not now. Maybe soon. Five or ten years. <laughs> All right. Let me know if you want anything else, okay? All right, darling. Thank you. You know, this is the first time I've stayed in my room like this since I had the measles. <laughs> Good night, darling. Good night, Ma. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Chester, you get out of here. Just please, just listen. Oh, oh, that was my spleen. Well, you're lucky that's all that it is. <laughs> Jess, please listen. I'm sick. I've got a disease. Well, with the company you keep, I don't wonder. <laughs> no, Jess, not that. Don't you understand? I can't help it. What I do is a sick. No, really? Is that what you call it, a sickness? And the cure is bed, is it? <laughs> I'll get help, Jess, if you'll just give me another chance. I'll get help, I swear it. If I were diabetic, you wouldn't throw me out. If you were a diabetic, you'd stay away from the cookies. <laughs> Jess, I want help. I swear it. I hate what I do as much as you. Oh, I know. It's a real drag, isn't it? <laughs> that dressing and undressing. You won't believe me, will you? If I were a fat man who couldn't stop eating, you wouldn't throw me out. If I couldn't stop drinking, you'd let me stay. Well, this is no different. I'm sick, Jess. I'm a sick man, and I'm in need. Oh, Chester, <laughs> don't cry. I'm a sick man, Jess. I'm sick, and I'm hurting. I'm scared. <laughs> okay, Chester, okay. Look, we'll talk. You'll get help. 
Thanks, Jess. <laughs> in the meantime, you'll stay in the guest room. Guest room? Yes, we'll look at it this way, Chester. You have a disease, and I don't want you too near me until you're cured. <laughs> So you'll keep in touch? Yes, I will, Miss Page. Thanks for coming by. Because if you don't hire me, I got a job offer from a couple of chinks down the block with two little brats. <laughs> so let me know. You'll be the first one I call. Nice seeing you, lady. Bye. You believe that? Apply for a nanny and Rommel comes over. <laughs> it's been like that all day. It's yours is so bad. Are you kidding? Of all of them, she was the most charming. Jody, some of them were very, very nice. You're just being picky. I can't help it, Ma. I'm looking for someone very special, very loving, very unique. Like who? Like you. Only I can't find her. I'm sitting right here. Oh, come on, Ma. I'm being serious. And I'm not? Mom, you can't run down here every day. It's an hour's drive. True. But you could move home. Ma. Why not? I'd love it. Bert would love it. Even Bob has said he's looking forward to... <laughs> Bert and I would really love it. Ma, it took me 26 years to move out. Besides, I don't want to tie you down. Tie me down to what? What do I have to do all day? Rope cattle? What? Ma, you're forgetting how much time a baby demands of you. But there's me and Bert and Mrs. Burns down the street. Oh, she'd adore sitting with Wendy a few days a week. Mrs. Burns, you mean that sweet little old lady who used to babysit for me? Mm -hmm. Ma, she was 90 back then. <laughs> She's 62. In 1930, she was 62. Come on, now, let's go. I fixed it. Fixed what? The thing that needed fixing. What thing? Doesn't matter. You've got to get a new one anyway. <laughs> Jody, those things don't last forever. What thing? What thing? Again, please, Mary, let's go, huh? Grandpa, come on, man, let's go. Bert, talk to Jody. Convince him I'm right. Jody, please, she's right, huh? Your mother is right. Huh? Listen to her on this, huh? She knows what she's talking about. Just trust her on this one, okay? What am I talking about here, please? <laughs> Mom wants me to move back home. So? Come home. Jody, come on. There's plenty of room. Hey, you could go back to work. And let's face it, if you were living with us, you wouldn't get those cracked pots from the welfare department, right? Oh, uh, yeah. All right, so? I don't know. Come on, Joe. Come home. Come on. We could do things together again, like hunting and fishing in the old days. We never did that. <laughs> now we can. Just think it over, okay, honey? I will, my promise. I admit it does make some sense. Absolutely makes sense. Come on, Joey. All right, think about it. Roll it over in your head. Do whatever you want to do. Grandpa, come on. Okay. Goodbye, honey. Bye. Oh, please don't feel pressured by us in any way. I don't, Ma, really. Does that mean you're going to move home? Ma. Man. Okay, okay. Just remember, if you change your mind... I'll call. Should I write down the number? I think I'll remember it. Okay. Bye, Bye Wendy. Talk to you later. Oh. If you should call, we should be home in an hour. Ma! Wait an hour and a half, traffic. Lock this door. <laughs> Ask you a little question. Mm -hmm. How was I? <laughs> oh, Bert, you were wonderful. I told you that. You're so silly. You were wonderful. Do you say that to all the birds? <laughs> <laughs> it's for nothing. It's just kidding. I was just wondering. That's all. I told you. It couldn't have been any better, really. It was the best ever. Yeah? Mm. <laughs> the 
best ever for me or for any bird. Bird? I'm just, Mary, I gotta know. Can't you just forget it? Forget it, man, please. There was another man in my house, in my bed, in my pajamas. <laughs> there was another man in the house, man. Come on, how do I forget that? It wasn't as if I fell in love with another man. It wasn't another man. It was you. To you, it was me. To me, it wasn't me. To me, it was that hot little silver guy that's... <laughs> so how was he? I don't believe this. I gotta know, Mayor. Come on, just how was he? I refuse to discuss this. Great, huh? Well, yeah, he was really great. <laughs> yeah, what was so great? I mean, what did he do that was so great? I mean, how many ways are there that someone can be much better than someone else? It's not like dancing. I mean, there's not a whole lot of steps. So what do you do? Well, some, you know, fancy space stuff that we don't have yet? Was that it? I'm not discussing this, Bert. It's ridiculous. Because if it was some kind of science fiction type sex, Mary, I cannot compete. Those guys live forever. I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of things that they could do forever. <laughs> so was that it? I mean, could he, you know, or forever? <laughs> you know something? You're selfish. You are an incredibly selfish man, Bert Campbell. Don't change the subject here, Mary. I know what you're trying to do. You're just trying to throw me off the track. No, I'm not. I went through hell, Bert, hell. The man I thought was you was an animal, a maniac. I had to keep moving all the time. If I sat down, oh, God forbid, lay down, it was all over. <laughs> I felt like a fly. I had to keep going and get it. <laughs> and not only that, he was always going after other women. Family, friends, strangers, anyone. So, when you're all upset over how terrible it was for you, Bert, it was equally terrible for me. It was not only your ordeal. It's incredible. You and I had a terrible, he had a ball. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Don't you see that it could never be as good with him because the most important thing was missing? It was? <laughs> then how'd he do it? No, Bert, not that. Oh, oh I, I... Too bad. Love was missing, Bert. And when that's missing, all the expertise in the world isn't going to make it any good. That's why... It couldn't come close to being what it is with you. <laughs> oh, Mary. oh, Bert, I love you. I love you. Oh, I love you too, Mayor. Oh. Oh. Tell me one little thing he did you really like. Bert. Come on, man. Just one little thing. Just not a big thing. A little thing. I'll never ask you again. Well, he would. Bite my earlobe. He would bite your earlobe? Yes. That's what you like? Earlobe biting? Bert? Is that what this commotion is about? Some little guy comes by, chews on your ear, but he gets crazy? Bert, you said one little thing. That's one little thing. <laughs> What was it like this? Go, <laughs> what do you do with the earring? Swallow it? <laughs> hey, tell me, how's it feel to be 18? Pretty much the same. So far, only one minor artery is hardened. <laughs> Corinne, have you seen Eunice? Behind you. Just checking. What was that? Oh, Corinne, he is just driving me crazy. I roll over in bed at night and he asks me where I'm going. Well, I can't blame him, Eunice. I mean, he practically caught you red-handed in a hotel with another guy. Eric and I were discussing insurance premiums. Please, Eunice, insurance. Really? We had an accident. He rear-ended me. <laughs> I don't think your insurance covers that. <laughs> oh, you see that? 
Do you see how he watches me? He never takes his eyes off me. <laughs> he doesn't trust you, Eunice. Well, what kind of relationship are we going to have without trust? Relationships are built on trust. Without trust, you just don't have anything. I'll be right back. Where are you going? To call Eric. I've got to tell him we have to be more careful. <laughs> Jess? Hi. Hello. You look very nice this evening. Thank you. Oh, Jess. The hands. Huh? No hands. And no talking unless it is absolutely necessary. Now, this is Billy's birthday, and we don't want anyone to know that there's trouble between us. Anything you say, Jess. And when someone comes close, then we put up some kind of a front. <laughs> oh, oh, Jess, do you say the funniest thing? <laughs> oh, Jess. The hands. <laughs> So, have you thought it over? About moving back home? Yeah. And? I don't know. Well, we don't want to pressure you in any way. No, there's no pressure. Absolutely no pressure at all. You understand that? None. Come home. This is killing your mother. <laughs> Come home. <laughs> we'll try. Oh, oh, there you go, Jody. Right. <laughs> oh, Jesse, I have the most wonderful news. Jody's moving back home. Oh, Mary, I'm so happy for you. Could Chester have his apartment? <laughs> How are they? How are who? The hors d'oeuvres. Oh, well, I haven't tried them yet. I'm really worried, big guy. I never made hors d'oeuvres before. There wasn't much call for them in cell block eight. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> you know, rolling the little bitty dough and rolling the little bitty meat, that isn't easy when you got stubby hands. You see my hands? They're stubby. I, I, see, I got stubby hands. I see them, Dutch. I see them. That's from hauling garbage and greasing trucks and fitting sewer pipes. Here, here, try one. <laughs> I think not. Uh... Oh, come on, big guy. Just a little taste. Uh, maybe in a little while. Take a bite. No. Dutch, I'll... How are you? Very good. Uh, you just say it, man. <laughs> What's the matter, darling? You seem nervous. Oh, Ma, everyone is going to meet Leslie tonight. It is nerve-wracking. Last night, I dreamt she eloped with the entire senior class. <laughs> <laughs> darling, you love Leslie? Well, we all love you, so we'll all love Leslie. What's that for? Just for being such a terrific mother. Oh, Thank you. That's her. She's here. Everyone relax. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Happy birthday, Billy. Thanks. Hey, 18 big ones, huh? Well, he still looks like jailed ate the knee, Bob. <laughs> so where's your teacher, huh? Is she, uh, polishing her apples? <laughs> Good evening. Oh, Billy, I'm so sorry I'm late. Oh, are you late? I didn't notice. Uh, everyone, this is Leslie Walker. Leslie, this is everyone. <laughs> uh, hi, teach. You wanna go upstairs and conjugate some verbs? Bye. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mom Burt, PS 71, class of 46. Hi, uh, Leslie Walker. What's the capital of Arizona? A phoenix. You're <laughs> right. It's nice to see you. <laughs> That's his teacher? Uh, not bad, huh? Not bad. All my teachers look like Rocky Marciano. <laughs> I might have gone to a class once in a while if I had teachers that looked like her. <laughs> I might have gone to a class if mine looked like Rocky Marciano. <laughs> You know something here? It's very ironic. What? Well, they made it illegal for teachers to hit the students. And now there's a wait a minute, that's hey, now the students hit on the teachers. It's ironic. She's adorable. Didn't I tell you? Do you think they're, you know, no. Absolutely not, please. He's a child. He still plays with his boats. <laughs> Billy, I, I have a little present for you. Oh, you didn't have to do that. I quit my job. That's my present? 
Well, I had applied for a job at the university last semester, and it, it came through. So that means... Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what does it mean? Well, it means that I'm no longer your teacher. Mrs. Fairbanks is your teacher now. See? You mean I have to take out Mrs. Fairbanks? <laughs> You're 18. You're a man. I'm no longer bound by any legal or moral code. I can safely give you your present. And tonight, I'm going to light up every candle on your cake. <laughs> I'd better start thinking of a wish. Private, is she bothering you? Who, Gramps? These camp followers can be a pain. Gramps, this is Mrs. Walker. Hello. Mrs. Biff Walker? Blackjack Biff's wife? <laughs> Your husband is one hell of a pilot, Mrs. Walker. Gramps. You've got to be careful, son. A non-com with an officer's wife can get you 20 years in the brig. <laughs> also, don't bite her shoulder. She hates that. <laughs> Colorful family you have. Look, I know they seem a little, uh... And the major seems a lot. But don't let it bother you, okay? It's not hereditary. I mean, deep down, we're all strong-willed, clear-minded people. Oh, I wasn't worried. Good. So you have to be careful, huh? You just stay away from me. You asked for it, Eunice. Wait a what is going on? Hey, hey, Dutch, come on, get a hold of your hey, hey, Come on, chop liver never solved anything. <laughs> You're right, Bert, thanks. I should just keep... Hey, hey, oh! Oh, just take me back, take me back. Please help me, good Don't send me away. Oh, oh, oh. Why don't we go? Now? Yeah, it's time to open my present. <laughs> what is it you got? <laughs> In the last episode of Soap, Chester told Jessica he fools around with other women because he's sick and needs help. Mary convinced Jody to move back home, and that way he could get help with the baby. Danny met a girl named Polly at the cemetery who might help him get over Elaine. And Bert, who has trouble sleeping, went to the doctor for a physical, hoping that might help. Confused? You won't be after this episode of Soap. This is the story of two sisters, Jessica Tate and Mary Campbell. These are the Tates, and these are the Campbells. And this is Soap. I think you should take the uh, bottom drawers in the bureau because you're shorter, and I'll take the back of the closet because my arms are longer. Are you sure it's all right? Well, there's not much I can do about it now. <laughs> Must be from all those chin-ups. No, no, Danny, I mean about moving in here with you. I mean, after all, this is your room. <laughs> are you kidding me? My little brother is moving back home. I wouldn't have it any other way. I can't believe I'm back. It took me all those years to move out. But it will make life a little easier. I can go back to work, and I'll know Wendy's okay. Hey, listen, uh, you want the uh, lumpy mattress or the springy mattress? Springy, if it's okay. Uh, it's cool. I like lumpy. <laughs> <sighs> Makes me feel like there's someone in here with me. <laughs> you know, I remember when we shared a bedroom as kids in the old house. Yeah. You told me my first dirty joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you didn't get it. <laughs> you were so innocent. I was four. <laughs> hey, listen, I got a surprise for you. 
This is a real blast from the past. Ta-da! The hoop, our old basketball hoop. Wow, you saved it all these years? Yep. All right, a little one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. Two from the floor, three from the beds. Okay, turn right. off the TV. Right. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> look at this, it's a meeting of the minds. <laughs> Einstein and Dr. Freud. <laughs> it's Derek! <laughs> Did you hear? Jody's moving back in. Did I hear? My room is being transformed into a nursery. <laughs> Did I hear, he says. Oh, see, the nursery's for the baby, Bob. See, Jody's moving back home, and he's bringing his baby with him, and the baby is going to sleep in the nursery. But let me explain it to hey, you. Hey, the baby... I, I got it. I got it. God, it's like talking to a brick. <laughs> Look, Jody and Danny are going to share rooms, so you and I are going to have to share our room again. Oh. Hi. Oh, Mary, can I please sleep with the lady? I love that lady, and I've always loved that lady, and even more important, I really hate Chuck. <laughs> That's the arrangement. Take it or leave it. Hey, man, where is everybody? Jody, come on. Look. Hey, oh, look at this. Look at that. Is this great? All the kids here. Yeah, my three sons. I feel like Fred McMurray. <laughs> well, you like time. We'll do something special. Come on, what do you want to do? We'll, uh, the whole family goes. We'll go bowling. We'll shoot a little pool. Jody, it's your night. Whatever you want. Name it. I want to go apartment hunting. <laughs> Will you just calm down? No, no, no. That's the way I want it. I'll move. I'll live alone. And if I get murdered in my sleep, it's on your head. That's ridiculous. It sure is. How could you possibly get your own place? Huh? You have to stand on a chair to open the door. <laughs> Jody, 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 Jody. Ma, ma. I'm gonna make your favorite meal tonight, just for you, in honor of your homecoming. Thanks, Ma. Hey, Jody, the Knicks are playing at the Garden tonight. These are center court. I really had to pull strings. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I was gonna take them bowling here. I mean, all of us. I reserved an alley already. I was gonna cook something special and drive us all to Coney Island, just like when you were little. Coney Island? Oh, what were you gonna cook? Sally Tree, guys, has our alley. Bert, the Knicks are playing the Lakers. They are. Lasagna. Lasagna? What time is the game? We can go on the cyclone. You used to love the cyclone. The cyclone? Hey, Dan, you got an extra ticket? <laughs> Frozen custard, Nathan's famous hot dogs. And of course, it's entirely up to you, Jody. Nathan's famous hot dogs? And frozen custard. I love the cyclone. <laughs> what time is the game, Dan? Oh, hold it, hold it. Listen, everybody, I really appreciate this, and it all sounds great, but... What do you say we all stay home together? I mean, the whole family, and we can eat some lasagna and, and play with Wendy. What do you say? That's cool. Yeah, sure, if that's, that's what you call fun. <laughs> and, and then we can have a nice chat, huh? I'd love nothing more. Sure. Hey, you got an extra ticket? So, uh, so we're not going to Coney Island, is that it? You mean you still want to go? Okay, Dan, what time is that game? Because if you'd like to go, we could go. I'd love to go. I'd love to go to the game. Well, you know, just long enough to chow down a dog, take a spin on the cyclone, a little frozen custard. Yeah, here, here. Let me have those here. Hey, Thank you very hey, much. Hey, hey, welcome home, Jody. Chuck oh. Bob, get your coat. Right. <laughs> we won't be long, Jody. I'll wait up. Don't bother. Oh. Put the lasagna in the oven for an hour, 350 degrees. <laughs> so wonderful having my family together again. <laughs> should be here any moment. Just make yourself comfortable. <laughs> you know, Chester, I feel kind of funny discussing our marital problems with the minister. I feel funny discussing it with anybody. Of course, it would be worse if it were a priest. Well, it would be like discussing a film with a blind man. <laughs> a rabbi would have been nice. They seem very wise. But I suppose you have to be Jewish. I wonder which religion does the biggest business in this sort of thing. Ah, uh, sorry I'm late. Got stuck in a death. I beg your pardon? Funeral. Just did a funeral. Poor guy got killed roller skating. Oh. He fell? Drowned. Was skating in the park, couldn't stop. Skating into the lake, couldn't swim. That was that. <laughs> 
Left a wife, two kids, and a Porsche with no problems. <laughs> but on to happier things. You are the Tates, and you are here because... Go ahead, Chester. Oh, no, Jess, you can go first. No, you tell it better. Uh, well, we have a problem. It's not a big problem, really. Actually, it's a little problem. <laughs> but it's big enough to be a problem. It's been a problem for a while. I never thought it was a problem. <laughs> but uh, now I see that the problem, which is our problem, is really my problem. And of course, being my problem, it actually becomes her problem. And uh, that, in a nutshell, is the problem. <laughs> Well put, Chester. Could you be a little more specific, do you suppose? Chester goes through women the way an elephant goes through peanuts. <laughs> See, he fools around with anything, anytime, anywhere. He lies, he deceives, he sneaks around. He cheats before work, he cheats during work, he cheats after work. He cheated on our honeymoon, he cheated on our anniversary. He cheated while I was in labor in the hospital. In the hospital. He has cheated practically every week of every month of every year of our entire marriage. But other than that, he has been a wonderful husband. I see. Well, it's starting to take you a long time to come and see me. Took her all this time to catch me. Of course. Well, uh... I see this sort of problem a lot. It seems to be going around. I think part of the reason is that there are no more Indians. <laughs> Beg your pardon? You see, in the olden days, we had Indians to worry about. Where were the Indians? Were the Indians surrounding us? Were the Indians angry Indians? Did the Indians want our horses? Nobody fooled around because you couldn't relax long enough. <laughs> now, we got no more Indians. I see. The best marriages were in the Apache territory because those were the worst Indians. Hostels without, no hostility within. We have a lot to thank the Indians for. Happy marriages, nice beadwork. Uh, well... What do we do now that there are no more Indians? <laughs> Aggravate some other group, maybe. Look, I don't think I need Indians. I want a change. I want desperately never to look at another woman again, and I sincerely think that I can do that. Excuse me, Daddy? Can I please borrow the car keys? Sure, Angel Puss. <laughs> Thanks. My daughter. I see the resemblance. <laughs> well, Mr. Tate, I see your problem. I have trouble understanding it, but I do see it. I mean, if I had such a lovely, feminine, genteel, sophisticated, enticing, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous piece of gorgeousness in my house, I'd never leave. <laughs> well, yes, of course, but I mean, gorgeous. see the promise. Gorgeous. Uh, your ministry. Uh, how do you keep your marriage trouble free? Divorce. <laughs> Married 16 years. My wife decided we had to have new carpeting in the family room. Guy came to lay the carpet, probably got a little confused about what he was there to lay. <laughs> Left me with four rolls of Bigelow shag and took off with my wife. How awful. Might have been an Indian. <laughs> well, that's beside the point. We're here to help you people. Now, the problem is Mr. Tate's. It is not your problem. You have no problems. Oh, contraire. <laughs> now, Mr. Tate, we have a group that meets here once a week. It's a bunch of men like yourself with the same sort of problem. It's kind of a group therapy situation led by a very competent lay therapist. I used to lead the group myself, but I had to quit. The stories got me too excited. <laughs> You 
You should hear those guys talk. <laughs> anyway, I think it'll do you a lot of good. Come tomorrow night, 8 o'clock. Well, I've got to run. A wedding. Complete waste of time. They haven't got a chance. He's 49, she's 21, been married four times. I give it 10 days. <laughs> Yeah? Hi. Make it fast. Uh, we don't I... want any. <laughs> yeah? Is this 58 Milburn Street? Who wants to know? I'm looking for Polly Dawson. I ain't her. <laughs> Do you have me confused with somebody you really hate? You see this? Yes, I do. I see that. Take a good look at it, because in about two seconds, it's going to be behind you. Look, could, could you just tell Polly that I'm here? I'd rather not. For me? Beat it. But could I leave a note? Uh, Eddie, what's going on around here? Nothing, Mama. Oh, excuse me. Hi. I'm here to see Polly. Oh, for God's sake, Eddie, let the man in. Hi. Polly, someone to see you. Danny. I was in the neighborhood. I hey, thought who I... is this creep? Uh, th this is Danny. Hi there. Where'd you find him? Oh, we met last week at the cemetery. Oh, you hang around cemeteries. <laughs> I was there visiting my wife. Oh. And, and you just happened to pick up this black chick along the way so the day wouldn't be a total loss. <laughs> Danny, why don't you sit down and make yourself comfortable? <laughs> I I'm Polly's mother, and this is her brother, Eddie. Hi. Why don't you get out now while you can still crawl? I think he's warming up to me. Eddie, why don't you get out of here? Next time, I won't be so polite. <laughs> so, uh, how'd you find me? It was easy, really. My stepfather and my brother and me staked out the graveyard for a couple of days, and when you didn't show there, I just started it on the phone book. There's only a couple hundred Dawsons. Oh, I never did tell you my address, did I? Or your last name, or your phone number. Well, you didn't ask. I didn't think it was a good time. I guess you changed your mind, huh? Yeah, I did. I don't hear nobody talking. <laughs> I was taking a breath, Eddie. Is it all right if we breathe? OK, so long as it don't become audible. <laughs> It's just that I felt really good that afternoon. I haven't felt that good in a long time, and I... I wanted to feel that way again, so I found you. Was that okay? Yes. Because I felt the same way. You did? Yes. Sounds like a damn movie. <laughs> and you're, you're glad I'm here? Glad? <laughs> I'm amazed. I'm incensed. <laughs> Eddie! When I thought I might not ever see you again, I got a little worried. I didn't. You didn't? Uh-uh. Because there are only seven Dallases in the phone book. <laughs> <laughs> see, I did a little research, too. I guess this means that maybe I can see you some more then, huh? I would say that's correct. <laughs> well, I have to come here. Eddie, please. Hey, look, it's only about 7 o'clock now. Do you want to go out? Sure. Let's go. Have her home by 8. <laughs> Mama, I'm going to go out for a few hours. Oh, honey, if you go by the cemetery, stop by Grandpa and say hi. Oh, well, we're not going to go there, Ma. Oh. Ready? Yes. It was nice meeting you. Oh, nice meeting you, Danny. <laughs> See you again, brother. <laughs> You touch one hair on her head, and I will break every bone in your head. <laughs> He's a little hostile, isn't he? Oh, don't worry about Eddie. He gets it from our father. That's comforting. <laughs> Hey, 
Hey, Doc. Hey. How you doing, Doc? Come on. Sit down. Yeah, all right. Come on. What's the matter? Come on. Why are you so glum? Dow Jones down again. <laughs> Bert, I wanted to talk to you without Mary. Something's the ma matter with Mary. Wait a minute. Oh, oh, the doc oh, went, what God, she's sick? Oh, no, she's not no, gonna no, die. No, no, what no, is... no, but Mary, Mary's fine. She's never been better. Oh, good. Thank you, Doc. I love you, Doc. <laughs> I really love you, Doc. In fact, she's pregnant. <laughs> Pregnant Mary? Right. You mean she's gonna have a baby? That's what it usually means. <laughs> a baby! <laughs> oh, I love it, a baby! Mary and I must... At least they'll be our first baby together, Doc. That's a, a baby. Oh, God, thank you. You're terrific. Oh, a baby, Doc, Doc, Doc. Mary and I are gonna have a baby. I know. <laughs> I can't believe it. Now, Bert, there's something we have to talk about. What I know, I know about our age. We're not old. Come on, it's better to have a baby when you're older because you're smarter. Really, you, you got more experience, you know more things, and, and, and you don't care so much about your clothes. You know? Bert, it's not all good news. I, come on, Doc. I know what. You never sleep, Doc. I had three kids. I didn't sleep for five years. One or two naps, poof, that was it. <laughs> Besides, the older you get, the less sleep you need. It's a medical fact. Don't you ever read Newsweek? <laughs> Bert, that's not all. Twins! We did twins! <laughs> twins! Go! That's go! Oh, God, that's great! Twins is great! No, no, no it's, it's not... It's yes, not, Doc, I'm telling you, it's great, it's great. I just won't dress them the same. I hate that. <laughs> I got two old maid twin aunts. They're 80 now. They still dress the same. <laughs> Every day they wake up and argue about what they're gonna wear. They're very weird. Bert, that's not it. You're probably right. They were probably weird to begin with. <laughs> no, Bert, it's you. Yeah, I have been called weird. <laughs> Bert, uh, you remember the tests we did? Do I remember? You should see my arm. They look like a junkie here. <laughs> and then you remember we did a second bunch of tests? Yeah, she took the rest of my blood. Well, I got maybe a half a cup left dashing around my body trying to cover it all. Both sets came back the same, Bert. Good. That's a relief. Then I don't have to do it a third time. <laughs> Bert. I'm afraid you're a very sick man. Mm-hmm. You have Mylar syndrome. It's a very rare blood disease. Yeah, so? What's the cure? There is no cure. What happens? What do you, what do you mean? It just goes away all by itself? I'm afraid not. What, ha what happens? It's fatal, Bert. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? That's why we did the second battery of tests. Huh. It's me? Yeah. No. Bert. No. No, no, you just told me we're having a baby. Bert, you are. Then I can't die. I'm not dying. I can't. Bert, I wish there was something I could do. I wish there was one thing I could do. How long? I mean, what, uh, how, much, how much time? About five months. Five months? Everybody else gets six. They always say six months to a year. What is this? I get five? It, 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 it could be six, Bert. It, it, no, it, it, it could be no, six. No, I don't believe that. I, I don't. This, what do you, what do you call this stuff? It's, it's, uh, Mylar syndrome. Well, and you got nothing for it here? You got, you got, you got wonder drugs and machines and men on Mars, and you got nothing for this stuff here? But Mylar wins? I'm afraid so. I gotta go. Are you gonna be okay, Bert? Apparently not. <laughs> I'm sorry, Doc. Doc, I'm sorry. Come on, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. You okay? Bert, if there's, if there's anything I can do...
Are you sure? It's incredible. On the happiest day of my life, you tell me I have no life. I see you, Doc. 